All right, let's look a real quick at how to do a integrate definite integral involving a radical with u substitution. Now, why am I picking u substitution to do this? Well, it's because I see a, a combination of an expression and the derivative of that expression. And what I mean by that is this underneath the radical, the 1 plus 4x, the derivative of that is going to be 0 plus 4, or just 4. And that's just a constant. And as long as a derivative of a, a function underneath the radical shows up outside the radical, I am able to do u substitution because it basically, the idea of u substitution is we're undoing the chain rule from the derivative process, differentiation process. So if, if you remember how the chain rule works, we don't change the inside function and we chain on the derivative of that function on the outside. So if we're integrating, if we're reversing, reversing the differentiation process, then we would have to have the derivative of this show up outside as a chain being multiplied by this okay now the derivative of this 4x is missing it's 4 so what i mean by that is if i took the derivative of du i would have du dx is 4 now what i'm going to do from there is i'm going to multiply both sides by dx and i have du equals 4 dx so I have dx, I don't have the 4, but I can take care of that by solving for dx. Basically, if I divide both sides of this thing by 4, I would get 1 fourth du is equal to dx. And if you look, I can now replace dx with 1 fourth du. That's what this allows me to do. I can also replace 1 plus 4x with just u. Now, why would I want to do that? Because now I can rewrite everything. This 1 plus 4x is the same thing as u. So the thing under the radical just becomes u. The dx is 1 fourth. There's the 1 fourth. I always pull it out of the integration. And the du. So dx is now 1 fourth du. 1 plus 4x is equal to u. And I'm simplifying this integrand. Okay, now here's the other thing. I highlighted this. Whatever your differential is, when you have your limits integration, these values that are in your limits integration are this integral. So this 0 is an x. This 6 is an x. I want to switch those to u's. So I'm going to use this relationship between u and x to come up with what these new lower and upper limits integration should be this is an x so i'll plug it in there this is a an x so i'll also plug it in there and now these will become the new lower and upper integration um, limits in terms of u instead of x the, the differential and the limits need to match up if you're going to actually plug them in if not you have to hold on to them and then use this to substitute back and then plug them in but you can simply just substitute them out and change these to use to where it matches up with the differential and then you can just directly substitute everything in the, and we get a whole new problem in terms of u and don't have to go back to the x's all right and now everything's now changed so we've got the 1 fourth du which is the same thing as dx we've got the u underneath the radical which is the same thing as the old thing underneath the radical 1 plus 4x and now my low, lower and upper and limits integration when x is 0, I get 1 plus 4 times 0. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. When x is 6, 1 plus 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And so this is what the new integrand becomes. Now the other thing you want to do here, more than likely, is to um, change this from the square root to u to the 1 half. Use that property of roots becoming exponents. All right, and then I've got it as u to the one half power now why do i do that because now i can use the the power rule for um 
integration, which says to add 1 to the old power. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves, so I'll have a u to the 3 halves. And then you divide by the new power. The new power is 3 halves. If I divide by 3 halves, it looks pretty messy. But remember, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So instead of dividing by 3 halves, I'll multiply this by 2 thirds. And now this is the antiderivative of this. So I don't need the du anymore. I've, I've applied the power rule. I've got that 1 fourth still hanging out on the outside. And this 25 and 1 will now go in for u. These are u's, so I can plug them directly in. So what I always do here is I, any time if I get a, with the power rule, if I get a, uh, a fraction that I'm multiplying by, I just go ahead and combine it with a fraction on the outside. So two thirds and a fourth, the twos will cancel. Or sorry, the two will go into the four two times. Two times three is six, so I'll have a six on the outside. And then I'm going to plug in 25 where the u is and one where the u is. So 25 going in there, I'll have 25 to the three halves power. And then I'll have minus because the definite integrals remember we plug this one in and then subtract plugging this one in so then we'll have a one to the three halves power okay and that's just the fundamental theorem of calculus so the 25 goes in minus the one going in 25 to the three halves 25 uh the the two on the bottom means square root so the square root of 25 is five and then five cubed is 125 and then 1 to any power is 1. So this is going to be 1 sixth. And we're going to get on the outside a, uh, or 1 sixth on the outside, and then a 125 minus 1 is 124. So 124 divided by 6, and then you just reduce that. And that'll reduce to 62 thirds. All right, it's what this interval becomes. All right, so if you follow our path, I've got a radical. Underneath that radical, I have, this is a line. If you think about it, this is 1 plus 4x. That's the same thing as mx plus b. This is a line. The derivative of a line is its slope, or in this case, just a constant. There's um, nothing out here. There's no constant. It's not, the, the 4 is not out here, but we can alter it. We can... Um, we can accommodate that, by, you know, by uh, by substitution. If there had been an x out here, we'd have had to go a different route with this. Or if it had been an x, you know, to the third or something, we would have definitely had to go a different route. If this had been a um, an x squared underneath the radical, we would have had to go a different route because the derivative of 1 plus 4x squared is 8x, and there is no x out here. All right, as long as it's a, um, if there is a multiple of that thing, like if there had been an x, even though it's not 8x, that would have still been okay. We would have been able to work with it. But there has to at least be a multiple of the derivative of what's under here for us to be able to do u substitution um, directly. Now, we, again, sometimes we can do substitution and manipulate it. But if it's if it's missing, if the derivative of what's underneath the the radical is missing, we have to go into other integration techniques, which will come later. But for a radical with a line underneath it, we can do u substitution with that, and this is the path to do it. All right, the derivative of this is 4x. We're missing the 4dx, so that means we'll have this 1 fourth. All right, that that basically wiped out the chain from the chain rule. Right, if you can remember, this is u substitution is reversing the process of the chain rule from calculus 1. All right, so we substituted. We still had x's. We used this equation to change these x's to u's. Now these are u's on the top and bottom. And once these are u's and we have the, the matching differential and the limits integration, we apply the integration technique for that particular function type. So in this case, it was the power rule.
plug in upper limit integration minus plugging in lower limit integration and uh, subtracting once we put that in. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So there's two parts to it. The one that we did with our um, project was the other part, but this is the more common, commonly known part, which says if you've got a definite integral, and we do, this is a definite integral, f of x here is this guy right here, then the, uh, the area underneath that, the, the area underneath this, which is what this is asking for, is equal to capital F. This is the antiderivative of this is the antiderivative of this function. So big F is little f's antiderivative. So u to the one half is what our big F became once we did our substitution. And the antiderivative is given by the, the power rule for integration. So we did this. 2 thirds u to the 3 halves is the antiderivative of u to the 1 half. And then we plugged in our upper inter limit integration. We plugged in our lower limit integration and subtracted. Okay, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's vital that you understand that thing moving forward because this is not exclusively, but pretty close, what calculus 2 is about. It's about integration. A, a big, big chunk of it is about integration.